Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of No More Future. So we're picking up the last place we left off where uh, Jasper had just dropped us off and we're having a little conversation with Mary about what happened during our stay. And <laughs> she uh, kind of thought that Jasper killed us or kidnapped us or all kinds of other horrible things. But no, everything is uh, somewhat okay. Better than it could have been, I'd say. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy the maintain for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's do it. <sighs> uh, mouse, what are you doing? Okay, Mouse got stuck on something. There we go. Okay. Damn it, Mouse, what are you doing? Okay, there. Okay. Plus, there's not a lot worth mentioning anyway. A bunch of bodies got stolen by unknowns or whatever. Five, to be exact. Not that big of a deal, honestly. Of course you'd say that. How is it not that big of a deal? When have you had five empty synthetic stolen? <coughs> when you had five empty synthetics stolen from you, exactly. Really, now do you realize Jasper's turned his gaze to meet yours, seemingly displeased. Now that you think about it, you've been hi you've been hogging this phone for quite a while now. He might be expecting you to give it back, but give it back now that you've placated Mary's anger. Actually, can I get a rain check on that? I think Jasper wants his phone back. Ugh, of course he does, that big baby. Alright, no problem. Like I said, it's not that important anyway. I'll have Natalie fill you in later if you want. Uh, not that important, if you say so. Sure, I'll catch you later. You too, see ya, play ya. You move the phone away from your ear and press the big red button to end the call. This feels a lot more natural indeed. Having a call on the phone, pressing a button to start it and another to end it. Not at all like what you've been doing the past few days, holding conversations entirely in your head, beginning and ending them by merely thinking about it. You're not sure whether these sour feelings come from you simply being unaccustomed to this new practice or because you flat out despise it. You definitely need a lot more time to... Excuse me. <laughs> the Drake stares at you with stone-cold eyes. My phone. Oh, right. You hand over the device back to its rightful owner, who proceeds to clean it thoroughly with a handkerchief nabbed from one of his pockets before stuffing it into another. About time. I was beginning to worry you might never quiet down over there. S sorry I guess I got a little carried away. That you did. The dragon crosses his arms as he goes back to staring outside the window. It's incredible how quickly her tone changed once she began speaking with you. Pardon me? Instead of answering, Jasper merely shakes his head. As though I could- as though I could even do anything up- as though I could even do anything to rough her up, to rough up her oh so precious robo boy. Well, can you blame her? You've tried to fire her and get rid of all the synthetics only a few hours ago. A decision I still find rather difficult to regret. Now it's your turn to slump back into your seat, thoroughly drained by this exchange. Talking with Jasper still feels like climbing a mountain made of eggshells. Sometimes it's fun, but most of the time it's just exhausting. His unapproachable attitude is more than enough to keep you away, and what lies underneath is just icing on the cake, almost as if he took pleasure coating every word that comes out of his lips in venom. Albeit, not always. Robo Boy. The dragon raises an eyebrow at you. What? Nothing. Ooh, hold up. Nothing? I, I just noticed something. You didn't call me a thing for once. You even used my preferred... Right before you can finish your explanation, you stumble into another realization. You've always used my preferred pronouns, haven't you? Jesper's eyes squint so much they're practically not even invisible anymore. They're not even visible anymore. Are you serious right now? What does that have to do with anything? It doesn't. I just appreciate it is all. Almost everyone I've met I've left since Pandora has referred to me as an it. Even the owners did that earlier, and they're the ones funding the whole project. So I guess I'm just relieved, I guess, that I don't have to deal with with that when you're around. Jasper immediately shakes his head at your kind words, covering his face with his hand to hide what appears to be his shame. Please, I refer to you the way I do because it's convenient, nothing else. It's the same reason why we have gendered pronouns to owls. To owls? To AIs. AIs. Owls. To AIs. The English language isn't designed around calling other people it. And though some people can somehow cope with it, I don't. And besides, just because I call my personal AI assistant Hippolyta doesn't mean I... People... Again, the face the Drake makes it makes as you cheekily interrupt him is priceless. You called me a people just now, didn't you? Your question is followed by an audible groan. If you don't drop this nonsensical discussion right now, I swear I'm going to kill you. Which would only be possible if I were alive. For fuck's sake, shut up! Jasper's angry shouting, potent enough to shake the whole car in its wake, is your sign to return to your quiet cackling in your corner of the vehicle. 
No wonder Mary loves doing this so much. It's exhilarating. But all jokes aside, it's probably best you don't push your luck any further. The CEO looks as tired as can be, and there's no telling what could happen if you were to annoy him any further. Plus, you already got what you wanted from him. A moral victory. A nice argument he might, he might ponder over, and the knowledge that he's not 100% an asshole. Only like 95%. <laughs> You eventually reach the train station, much to the Drake's relief. He practically kicks you out of the vehicle as you descend, glad that your time together for the day is at an end. He then quickly wishes you farewell as he closes the door behind him. You don't even have time to bid him, bid him the same before he's gone. Well, you can't say you can't say you don't deserve it. After that last exchange between you two, you're still totally worth it, though. With the green Drake out of your mind for the time being, you make your way inside of the main building, where a train awaits you to where a train awaits to bring your bring you home. Or, or will, give or take a few minutes. You tried to book a ticket on your own while you were with Jasper, using the skills Natalie taught you the other day, only to find out that Mary had already bought them, bought one for you. It was nice of her. One more thing you ought to thank her for next time you meet her face to face, before tearing her a new one for hiding all that stuff about Pandora from you. But this isn't the right time to think about stuff like that. You'll have to, you'll have to wait. You have to wait until you're on the train to properly unwind from everything that happened. Assuming Bradbury or some other jerk doesn't show up once again and make your day more miserable. More alert than ever, you make your way to the platform closest to the entrance, where your ride already eagerly awaits you. Well, eagerly might be a tad much, given the looks of the passengers are already giving you as you approach. Make sure to avoid meeting anyone's gaze as you step closer, scanning the train to find the most empty carriage to get into. Normally, you wouldn't deliberately shun company this way, but right now you really need a moment or two to yourself to think, th think everything through. However, just as you're about to step in... Oh! Hmm? Was that... Daphne? It had to have been. You don't know many other humans without noses who fit the description. Well, you don't know any, really. The last time you checked, is she was looking for a replacement for a gaming console. She must have found one by now and is probably heading back home. You, want, you ponder whether to try to catch up to her. On one hand, you could probably use the familiar company, but then again, you literally just said you'd rather stay alone. Besides, would she even want you to join her after the after the way things ended between you two earlier? You didn't exactly upset her or anything, but you're pretty sure of it that at least, but it seemed clear to you at the time that she also needed some time to Hey. Da ah! <laughs> Oh my goodness. A friendly looking Labrador suddenly appears behind you, scaring you half to death. Stop scaring me like that Upon hearing you shouting, Natalie almost freezes in place. No way! I did it again! I, I was trying so hard to approach you normally and everything! A sigh escapes your lips as you fail to grasp how the canine has managed not to kill anyone with her shenanigans so far. If she keeps this up, she might end up in prison for real. I need a new heart at this rate! A new... new heart, rather! Sorry! In spite of her special way of greeting you, the sight of your friend Natalie is quite the welcome one to be sure. If only a little strange. What are you doing here, anyway? Not like I'm upset at you seeing you or anything, but, well, it's just strange is all. Uh, oh! Mary told me you were headed to home just now. Uh, and all my work for the day has been taken care of, so I thought I'd come and say hi! I... see. You feel like you should be glad glad that she took time out of her day to surprise you like this, but for some reason, this that isn't the case. Maybe it's because you're still drained from the day's events and simply don't feel ready to feel ready to smile before your friend just yet. But something tells you that this isn't true either. Uh, when was that again? Hmm? When did she tell you I was going to the train station? Your question seems to stun the dog for just a moment, but she quickly regains her calm as she answers. Just now, actually. About five minutes ago, to be exact. Why? Her answer confirms your suspicions. Because five minutes ago was literally when I got off the phone with her. Pandora's HQ about 30 minutes away from here. How did you even get here that fast? Unless Pandora's managed to intervene teleportation in the two hours you were, you were away, Natalie's presence here is practically impossible. Maybe she has an ability of some kind, but she never gave you any indication that she did before, and you reckon you'd have realized sooner if that were the case. Perhaps you're merely overthinking this. Natalie seems to think so, at least. Hey, you might be cybernetic and all, but don't underestimate this, as to underestimate this Labrador. I'm way faster than you think. Faster than a car? Hey, you tried waking up late for an exam! Without knowing where it's even taking place. In the college you keep getting lost in. Your friend's expression seems to be considerably seems to considerably sour as she recounts her school years to you, but she manages to end her sentence with a faint smile. 
I'm resourceful like that. Y yeah. Resourceful. Right. Just then a loud melody bring rings throughout the station, reminding you that both of you that, the, that you still have a train to ride. Ah, oh, fuck. Guess our time's up. Sorry for cutting the conversation short, but I really gotta... Oh, that's alright. We can continue it on the train if you want. Now it's your turn to look completely stunned. But wait, you're coming with? Of course! As long as you'll have me, of course. Though, you better decide fast, because it doesn't look like we have much time left. That is true. It doesn't appear as though the train will give you much time to sort your feelings on the matter at all. Even though there's still countless questions you wish to ask, and countless doubts swarming your mind, it doesn't take long for you to reach a decision. Alright, lead the way. I'll lead the way. Natalie giggles behind you, behind you as you step onto the train. A wide smile on her lips. Why did she decide to show up now of all times, right as you're about to leave? If she wished to talk, couldn't you have done so on the phone like usual? And why do you feel so strange all of a sudden instead of relieved? It doesn't take long for the two of you to find some seats to rest on, right next to each other, surrounded by other passengers. As some of them begin to flee to other carriages as soon as they see you approaching. Others pull up their phones and try to pretend as though they aren't scared half to death. You try your best to ignore their suspicious gazes and periodic glances as you turn to look at your canine friend. Phew! Right on time! It's always a race against the clock when we're together, huh? Hey, don't drag me into this! I'm never late for a trip to the train when I'm by myself! Labrador giggles at your defensiveness. But hey, at least this time you won't have to take the train all by yourself. I try my best to keep you company while on the phone, but I know it's not quite the same thing. But what I'm trying to say is, I hope we have a great time together. Yeah, I know what you mean. I hope so too. After a few more seconds, the train's doors finally close, and you begin to move at a steady pace out of the station. The scenery outside begins to change, little by little. But you find yourself more preoccupied with the passengers around you than anything else. The surprise, curiosity, and fear that you find in their eyes before they hastily hide from the, hide them from your before they hastily hide them from you mirror your current feelings quite well. You thought you'd be able to clear your head while journeying home, but instead you feel more stressed than ever, almost as if Isaac. Natalie's hand touches your shoulder, an apprehensive look on her face. Uh, are you okay? You don't look so well. Instinctively, you shy away from her gaze, turning your own to the floor. Even though Natalie's your friend, you don't feel like opening up to her right now, or anyone for that matter. No, all you want right now is for a, lar is a large sofa to let yourself crumble over, and a warm pillow to cry yourself to sleep onto. But the more she looks at you with those big, caring eyes of hers, the harder it is, the harder it becomes to keep everything bottled in like that. No, I'm not okay. I haven't been okay in quite a while. It was hard enough to say that much. Painful, too. And yet the Labrador, as if oblivious to all that, pushes you onwards to continue. But what's wrong? Did something happen while you were out with Jasper? It's complicated. B besides, I don't think that now's the right time to have this conversation. You give a careful look to your surroundings, trying to glance at as many people as you can. Almost everyone around you has their eyes locked onto your frame, their ears peeled for anything you may say, their fear as palpable as your own insecurity. As they truly... Are they truly just as clueless as you were about the truth behind this world? About the power Pandora wields? Worse yet, should you give in to Natalie's prodding? Are you willing to accidentally enlighten them about it? Ugh, that's me. Just then, as if finally alert to everything that's troubling you, you see Natalie stand up from her seat, a determined look on her face. She tugs, the, she tugs at the collar resting on top of her sweater, as if begging it for courage, before facing the curious crowd with a raging fire in her eyes. Well, are you going to stare for much longer? If all you guys want, want is to listen to our private conversation, there are plenty of things I could tell you all personally. The Labrador speaks in a tone you're unaccustomed to. It's cold, almost manly, and it's quite a lot different from the way she sounded previously. When she got mad with Mary back when the two of you first met, it almost seemed like a performance. Like she was trying too hard to sound angry with her friend. This sounds way closer to the real deal. And it's clearly effective, too. It doesn't take long for the rest of the passengers to clumsily vacate the carriage, like panicking kids running away from a monster. Or maybe more like annoyed people who don't have the patience to deal with a very, very angry pooch. It's kind of hard to tell. Once the carriage is finally empty, Natalie immediately collapses on her seat, a conflicted look on both her face and your, and your own. You don't know what to say. Why did you do that? You ask, yet she doesn't answer. You didn't have to scream at them like that. Is everything okay? Now's your turn to ask that, even if you really shouldn't. But me? I I'm fine, I swear! She says that, yet her voice is a whirlwind of emotion, half stuck between the almost arrogant tone she employed just now and her usual, and her usual cheerful disposition. You're not sure how you feel about the Labrador's performance, or why she felt the need to go through with it, for that matter. 
You're hoping she can answer these questions for you instead, and after a brief sigh, the Labrador tries to do just that. It's just that the other time... Hmm? She turns to stare at you, her muzzle having to bend upwards to face yours, emphasizing the apologetic look on her face. The other time, when we took the train together, well, kind of together, you seemed upset about how everyone left all of a sudden when you arrived. I didn't say anything back then, but I could tell. And now, I seem to have those people were looking at you back there, like you were a rabid animal or something? I don't know. I got upset. I got really upset. It made me realize how you must feel every day of your life, now that you're a synthetic. She hesitates to speak further, but your silence eventually encourages her to continue. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have scared them off, now that they were almost letting you be in peace. But when I saw that look in your eyes, and imagined the way, and imagined the, and imagined the way you must be feeling right now, I, I felt like I had no choice. I don't want you to look like that. I don't want you to feel that way. I want to help. The canine's words pierce your solid exterior like a jolt of lightning, stirring up feelings and thoughts in you that you tried to hide for so long. You tried to hide for, to put to rest. <clears throat> God, throat. Clear your throat. A warm sensation begins to overtake you. Slowly overpowering the coldness that has taken hold of you ever since you left that restaurant. I I'm sorry. I wasn't. It wasn't supposed. I wasn't supposed to do that. It was my fault. I should just. Natalie makes as if to stand up, but you immediately lay your hand on her shoulder, the same way she laid. She laid her hand on yours just a few minutes earlier. And though your touch is nowhere near as mellow as hers was, it causes enough of a stir in her in her disposition that it soon convinces her to sit back down. <laughs> It's okay. You're okay. I'm not sure what I'm not sure whether what you did was good or not, but I appreciated it. At least you think so. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean it was harsh, but at least it got the job done. You're right. I don't like the way those people look or, or think or, or think of me. But and right now I'm in no mood to deal with it. I wanted some time to myself, some time to talk with you. You did? Good question. <laughs> The idea of discussing what happened at the restaurant with Natalie resurfaces in your mind. Though you scorned such thoughts before for obvious reasons, now that everyone has left, you're quite close to reconsidering. After all, you'll have to tackle the elephant in the room at some point, right? Isaac, are, are you okay? Natalie stares at you with big, curious eyes, but you're not sure how, you, how you're meant to answer that question right now. Nonetheless, you try. Look, I'm really upset too, you know that, right? Uh, my mind's all over the place right now. I know you're asking me to open up to you, but I'm afraid that if I do, I won't be able to rein myself back in anymore. When I start yelling at you too, and who knows what I could say that I could say that I and who knows what I could say. I don't want. It's okay. Natalie pats your back reassuringly with a happy smile on her face. I know what I'm asking for, all right. You don't need to warn me. I can I can tell you're bottling up a lot of stuff inside, and it's not very pleasant either, is it? I want to help, even if you wind up saying some mean things to me by accident. Even if I deserve it. You gaze into her eyes. Your friend is more confident in herself than ever before, ready to weather your storm with nothing but her seat on for their seat to hold on to. It's inspiring in a way, almost reassuring even. You sigh, already feeling like this is a bad idea. The evil thoughts encircling your mind like ravenous crows seem to think so, at least. But it's about time you confronted them head on, once and for all. Jasper told me that Pandora told me about. Oh, Jasper told me all about Pandora back at the restaurant, about its beginnings, its purpose, its legacy. And Natalie's head tilts, tilts in curiosity and uncertainty. I see. I'm sorry, but I don't think I follow. What bothered you about your conversation with Jasper? What bothers me is that neither you nor Mary ever spoke of this with me before. You didn't think to shout just now, but when the words came out, so too did the anger you were unknowingly repressing. Why did you never mention anything about how Pandora owns nearly every business in the world? About whether they get the money to fund the synthetic project from? Didn't you think it's important to tell me about the corporation who owns me right now? H hold on a moment, slow down. What exactly did Jasper tell you? Well, you're going all over the place. Noticing the frightful look on your face isn't going isn't going away anytime soon, Natalie's quick to Natalie's quick to explain herself further. I, I don't mean to deflect or anything, but I just want to know what you're talking about. You can't understand. I can't understand you if you're not if we're not on the same page. It takes a while for your anger to mellow down, but eventually you agree to the girl's request with a sigh. All right, may as well start in order. You tell your friend every little secret that Drake has whispered to you, beginning with your first conversation in his car, in the same order he chose, skipping over your many many objections, of course. You stop yourself in just short of Bradbury's arrival on the scene, 
once you feel like you've given your friend enough information to justify your, disappoint your disappointment. And that's as far as I understand it now, anyway. But I want to hear it from you. Why didn't you tell me anything about this before? It takes a while for Natalie to answer, but not quite as long as you thought she as you thought she'd need. Well, for starters, it never really came up, did it? I mean, you said it yourself, didn't you? How Mr. Morgan kind of went out of his way to start this whole debacle? It's not like there was ever a time in a few days we've known each other where the topic really came up on its own. You try to think of a comeback to the Labrador's for the Labrador's objection, taking quite a few seconds of silence to do so, and you feel almost relieved when you can't find one. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks if you can, it always helps. Till the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye